Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Chris Caligari, um, your host and um, community organizer for Kubert. And this is our weekly meeting where we talk about um, usage, Kubert usage issues and anything you would like to talk to us about. Um, let me post our community notes to the chat window. And as always, you have to be a, a member of the Kubert Dev mailing list in order to edit that. Um, and if you could please add your, uh, your name to the attendees list. Um, we always like to know who has been attending our meetings. And if you have read-only access, um, you can just uh, follow along with screen share, which I will do right now. Okay. We have a pretty slim agenda for this week so far. Um, feel free to add a bullet point um, and I have got the first, the first agenda item, um, which is the most important thing to happen to Project Kubert in quite a while. <laughs> um, I've begun the, the due diligence process for, um, for graduating the project to incubation stage with the CNCF. Um, this is uh, it involves uh, filling out some paperwork and uh, and doing uh, defending our dissertation in front of the CNCF uh, TOC committee. Um, I don't know how intense of a process this is going to be, <laughs> so I'm just feeling my way along. Um, I have a GitHub issue on the on this. If anybody would like to help. I could have filled this out before the meeting, but sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so there's our issue. Um, if you want to uh, want to help out or follow along, feel free to to tag yourself or um, or post uh, commits to the pull request, and uh, we can discuss it through the issue in the pull request. And that is all I have. Looks like we can have some folks uh, editing the, the note. So I'll give you a, a minute or two to fill in your items. Okay, um, nothing on the agenda. And I also have the first couple items in the open floor. Um, do we have Ryan Hallisey with us this week? I see somebody has called in using a, a cell phone or a telephone. Is that you, Ryan?
No. Well, um, I saw a news article uh, talking about the NVIDIA DHX supercomputer this morning. Um, I have nothing more to say about this other than I, I literally saw the headline. Um, I was hoping Ryan would be here this morning to see if he could uh, give us some deeper insight to uh, what they had going on here. Um, so enough about that. Um, moving on to events. Uh, I had a meeting with the uh, Red Hat um, open source op program office yesterday. And uh, they're not happy with, uh, with the project not um, submitting a, a paper for KubeCon NA and a KVM forum. Uh, to our defense, KVM forum had a, a hard line on being an in-person event up until about two weeks ago. Um, so that didn't give us much runway to, uh, to prepare a, a presentation uh, since everybody just, uh, everybody I spoke to put up their hands and uh, said they were uncomfortable with an in-person meeting or in-person uh, conference. And uh, it would have been an international travel uh, since KVM Forum was gonna be in Dublin, Ireland. Um, KubeCon NA, uh, we, uh, David Vossel had something cooking for KubeCon NA and I haven't been able to get a hold of him uh, to see the status on, on the submission. If anybody is talking to him today, please have him ping me. Uh, we need to figure out what's going on if, uh, if we have something for that conference. Yeah. If it hasn't been submitted by now, the time they, they had a really hard deadline for a couple of papers. So we don't have anything we're to late. Yeah, the, the deadline was Sunday. Yeah. Uh, Stu and Kevin and I are still working on uh, all things open in Raleigh in October. Um, we all have our hardware um, and uh, we're working on getting that thing set up. Personally, I caused a five hour network outage in my house trying to set up uh, layer two VLANs. <laughs> Wife was not happy. <laughs> my, uh, it's for science. <laughs> my child, worst, the worst part about it is my kid was uh, knocked out of virtual schooling all day. And so we had some explaining to do to the school. <laughs> Oh, Absolutely. I'm... You know, but on a happy note, on the all things open, uh, it's been a couple of weeks now since I played with it, but I did get uh, Cubevert running on the Raspberry Pi and Ooh. virtual machines that were uh, ARM based running on that Cubevert instance. Inside Sweet. Are you are you running x86 virtual machines? No, that was an ARM virtual machine okay. inside the, I, I, so it was hardware emulated at that point. So, hey, right. baby steps, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, while we're at that, maybe uh, that would be something we, we could discuss. I don't know if, if people are here that know about, but um, if we could get um, multi-arch images published for keyword. That's in the back of my mind. Um, we, we will need to get multi-arch images, but we're also going to need to get Kubevert able to deploy multi-arch images to a uh, hybrid cluster, because that doesn't exist right now. Uh-oh. Um, uh, don't be so worried. We can fix it. Yeah, yeah. yeah we like a good yeah, issue. But it's like, uh, interest. we found some interesting uh, steps when you took. We, 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 for the first time, we learned how to build ARM Kubevert, I think. Uh, that was already there, but we didn't know how to do it. And uh, interesting stories. Yeah, you guys are way ahead of me. Uh, I'm still messing around in the with the pipes, trying not to allow the internet into my network. Oh, it looks like uh, Vladek has 
posted a, a comment to KubeCon NA and KVM forum declarative API to configure and assign virtual GPUs to VMs with Kubert. Um, thank you very much for that, Vladik. Um, we kind of dropped the ball on, on getting something submitted. Um, if you need help in any way, please let me know. Um, there's, we have resources available through the, the Red Hat OSPO. And uh, if, uh, if you would like, please create an issue in the, in the community repo so we can track that, that work. Okay, Kevin, you have the next, the next bullet yeah. point. Uh, yeah, I just add that because I remember it came up today. Um, it, it, it might resolve itself on its own, but something maybe worth discussing. Discussing. Um, we added a um, a periodic CI job for uh, sysprep, and uh, the discussion came up on, on how to notify the right people if that breaks because it runs once a day. And um, Fabian brought up that we should do an, an, an email list. Um, so we're, we're looking at that and, and that might like towards Chris, maybe that we could, maybe we need some documentation for people on how to create Kubernetes related mailing lists or request them. Maybe, maybe we should like, manage them centrally because uh, permissions and stuff. And in general, like if we, how, how, if anybody has an idea on how to manage those notifications so we don't lose track of periodic jobs that so not everybody I, might care about. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually a half a step ahead of you on that. Um, I've talked with uh, Josh Burkus about how to manage mailing lists um, because we recently um, changed the Kubert dev mailing list ownership from the Red Hat provided Google account to the CNCF provided Google account. Um, and hooray, we didn't lose uh, the mailing list during that process. Um, so that brought up the question of uh, how do we create additional mailing lists? And because we are a sandbox project, we have limited resources from the CNCF. Um, Josh is supposed to check in with CNCF to see how to enable our account to create additional mailing lists. And uh, I will check back in with you guys um, when, uh, when that happens, if we get more information. Mm. Uh, for right now, how about uh, creating maybe a third Slack channel? Yeah, I don't know about like the Slack Uber. channel creation. And, and like it, it, Fabian at least explicitly requested that we do it in a mailing list. I don't know why um, that for might our, be up for debate. For but, archiving um, purposes, maybe. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. But, or not everybody's on Slack. I don't, and and I, I, to be fair, I, I always thought the mailing list to be more the official communication channel than the Slack channel so far. Yeah. Um, and the Slack channels are moderated by the Kubernetes community or CNCF. Um, what I know from Kubernetes, like all, all starting a work group there, the guideline is just create a public Google group, um, which is a mailing list and um, give the right permissions to some CNCF account to manage it if, in case you get lost. Uh, but yeah, that's the, that's the one part, like managing mainly. The other part is, do we have any preferences regarding periodic signals? Like this lane is being built by one of our team members and uh, we should probably maintain it, but like it's one person or the one team and, and it's an internal team. Like how do we, how do we maintain periodic jobs and make sure they don't stay in failed? Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, currently, we have a Slack channel in which we receive uh, uh, the uh, periodics, a notification when a periodic uh, uh, fails. Uh, but yeah, it, it is super noisy. And, and maybe having some something specific for 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 uh, specific jobs and uh, letting people to to uh, subscribe to this uh, uh, mailing list would make more sense. This is what we talked about uh, with Fabian when preparing this this uh, job. We have created even one uh, uh, Qbird periodics uh, mailing list under Red Hat. It is not a CNCF one, uh, but yeah, in, maybe oh. we will need something something more specific uh, because maybe uh, you want only to be to be notified of some specific specific jobs uh, when it fell and not uh, of everyone. If we have a single uh, mailing list, it, it is the same mostly as the a single Slack channel. Maybe if you are not interested about all the noise of all the periodics that are failing and all the of some specific uh, uh, jobs. Uh, but yeah, having a mailing list for per job doesn't make uh, too much sense. Uh, I'm not sure what is the right approach here. Yeah, it, I don't mind a mailing list but... just for that job, but yeah. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, if there's already a mailing list created, you can let me know, and then I can I can transfer the ownership. It's much easier than trying to uh, create new. Yeah. Of course. Let me paste here the the one that we have created. One second. Mm. It's something like. Oh, uh, the one that we have. Is that a mailman mailing list? Sorry? Is that a, a Google group or a mailing or a mailman? It's a Google group. Okay. Google group. Yeah, I can I can transfer that. Great. Thank you. But uh, just like when you transfer that, um, it will change its ad and then it will not work anymore. So like changing it will be you need to change it a few places, I suppose. Yeah, oh, uh, I'll I'll look into it and uh, any any impact to the uh, the actual address. I'll let you guys know. All right. Yeah, that's. Uh, I just wanted to bring that. We'll we'll also push it forward. On our end. Okay. Um, do you guys want to um, put like a, a tag in the subject line of emails sent to Kubert CI periodics? Or I think that would be easier than having a, a mailing list for every single periodic job. Um, yeah, um, I'll, I'll I'll bring it up async because I'm I'm, I'm not sure what what what's what's going on and what's going to happen. Um, I'll I'll talk to to the involved people again, I guess. Okay. I don't want to spam anybody. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um... Sounds good. Um, are there any other uh, thoughts, questions, concerns on periodic CI? Okay. Um, pull requests worthy of discussion. Um, poll 5038. Yeah, that's, that's me as well. Um, I just wanted to, to bring up bring it up or share it because partially because it took a while and a few people might be interested. We have uh, the Kiemu exec probes merged now. So you can now um, 
with, in a VM with the guest agent present, provide a, an exec probe that executes some command you specify in the VM. And just uh, you'd like you know with uh, pod probes, pod exec probes, and uh, it should work. So if you if you're interested in trying it out, it's a master. You can follow the document a link, and uh, if it doesn't work, please uh, get in touch. Uh, or if you yeah if you have any questions or need help. So what's the difference between readiness probe and cloud init slash sysprep? Uh, the readiness probe is passed on to to the Kubernetes workload, so to the pod. So if it doesn't, if it doesn't succeed, um, Kubernetes decides this VM is not ready and will not serve it if it's targeted by service. It's what's well, also already used by pods. Like you can say the pod is not ready and it won't receive traffic until it is. Okay. And, and the same, like there's also liveness probes. So if the liveness probe fails after some extent, the pod will be terminated. And um, depending on the setup, restart it or not. And this way you can make sure that your VM, VM gets restarted if it breaks. We already have that for uh, network and TCP probes, and now this also supports exec probes. Gotcha. And documentation ended up in repo. How about getting documentation into user guide? Um, I, yeah, I haven't looked at that. Um, I can. I can. Um, if you uh, feel free to send me uh, the, the right spot. Uh, Offline, or I'll sure. have a look. Sure. Yeah, it almost seems like uh, we've got duplicate duplicate information in our in repo docs, um, and now we have a, a contention on what is what's correct. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah, like this, this documentation was mainly meant for also during the PR for people to already test the PR. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's the keyboard IO website, but like I wasn't sure if that's like the same folder or where it gets generated from. And I didn't bother to look yet because I was busy with the feature itself. <laughs> Sorry about that, but sure. uh, yeah, yeah, no I'll, I, I don't worry, uh, it's, bring it in there. It's definitely a general problem that we have with the project. Um, as you can see in, in docs, we have many docs here. And uh, now we have to go through each, like some of these docs are really old and we have to figure out what is, what is what, what is, uh, what's correct. And unfortunately we have to go through every single page and, uh, and compare with what we have in user guide. When we did, uh, the user guide migration to, uh, to make docs in the, this past winter, uh, we discovered the problem and it just seemed like we were looking up at a very mountainous problem and uh, didn't address it for the sake of time and effort. I also earlier noticed that we have an examples folder with uh, VMs and I, I, I'd want to get a VM with the readiness probe in there probably. So that's, a, that's another point where, that we have documentation. Mm -hmm. I don't know how new it is, if it is new. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm not looking forward to uh, going down that rabbit hole. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. It looks awesome. Uh, Itamar is next with poll 5623. Hey, everyone. Um, so basically, this is a, a pull request that um, allows the VMs that chose host model CPU, uh, which means that uh, they use the, the, the host uh, CPU model, uh, to migrate only to, to other nodes which have the, the same CPU model or that support this, the, the CPU model. Um, now, the problem is that I'm wondering how to test this upstream because uh, we use a cluster which is very homogeneous. Uh, all of the CPU models are the same between all the nodes. 
So basically, um, yeah, I'm wondering how to test this because currently uh, the migration could always happen, but it's it's like uh, a crippled test. Um, so I was speaking with Vladik uh, before the meeting and we decided it's a good idea to bring this up here. Um, now I know from uh, QE that we can test it um, downstream, but that's that's uh, another story. Itamar, are you Red Hat? Yeah. Uh, you have, have you ever worked in the the D8 the diesel lab? I don't think so. Um, check it's it's spelled D A S L, and uh, and they have all kinds of different uh, machine types. Might be worthwhile to to do a a test with nested virtualization, or, or if you can get a I think we're mostly talking about Qbert CI. Right? Okay. Um, in in Qbert CI, uh, we have um, the same machine type for both for all the VMs that we start. And um, that, that's what makes it tricky. Um, See, do we have Daniel here? Daniel? Yes. Hi, Daniel. Do you have any thoughts on a, a mixed uh, a CPU architecture in CI? I'm not exactly in uh, uh, profound with that, sorry. Or Federico? One way to approach this um, is that we would be, we would basically take the same um, approach that we took with CPU manager, where we run the CPU manager on one node and we don't run it on the other. And then uh, this way we could uh, configure the models uh, differently in Kubernetes. That's only whether it will affect any other tests that we run. But I guess, uh, Gitamar, I, I think we can take it offline. Um, okay, sure. In, in any case, as, as Itamar said, said before, we, we run clusters with, with these super homogeneous uh, machines. Um, and then maybe if, if needed, we would need to spin up the different machines inside the, uh, the or have different bare metals with different CPU models or something like that, if, if this is required. So, but currently uh, they are all, all the same, all the machines are the same. From my side, I can truly test this only if I have at least uh, three nodes with uh, different architectures <clears throat> so that I know that what should be migrating uh, succeeds and what shouldn't fails. Um, but until then, I mean, at least we can, uh, we can have a, a small test or a lightweight test to just uh, test the, the, the general functionality. Okay, um, I guess that we'll just have to move forward. Um, Itamar, as always, let me know if I can help at all. Um, sure, thanks. We might be able to get Josh to help us out with uh, some 
additional uh, CNCF resources or or whatnot. Just have to feel our way forward. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Okay, that takes us to the bottom of pull requests. And let's see, I think we did a pretty extensive bug scrub last week. Yeah, we got uh, six bugs triaged last week. Um, would everybody be okay with skipping a bug scrub this week? Since we have a, a thin attendance. What does everybody think? Hearing any objection. Oh, Stu, I know you want to go through the bugs. <laughs> okay. Uh, if there are no objections, um, this will take us to the end of the meeting. And uh, I will return 30 minutes back to you guys. Thank you. Sound good? Okay. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, and we'll see you next week. Thanks. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.